And so I want to offer um, a starting point for this conversation that gets us thinking about what values are shaping our vision and thereby being embedded into our technology. This is a quotation from the Baha'i faith, the best beloved of all things in my sight is justice. Turn not away therefrom if thou desirest me and neglect it not if thou, if, if not, excuse me, and neglect it not that I may confide in thee. By its aid thou shalt see with thine own eyes and not through the eyes of others and shalt know of thine own knowledge and not through the knowledge of thy neighbor. Ponder this in thy heart, how it behooveth thee to be. Verily, justice is my gift to thee and a sign of my loving kindness. Set it then before thine eyes. And so the starting point for me in talking about technology, values, and visions is to understand the centrality of this notion of justice, that it's not just an external justice, but it's an internal justice in terms of being able to see with your own eyes that is, know your own knowledge and not having that be distorted by institutions, by, by the culture in which you happen to be swimming and immersed. And so when we think about those triple evils that King articulated, I want to focus in on one of them and the way that racism in particular distorts our vision. And that distortion then becomes codified, not just in our legal systems, our educational and health care system, but also in our computer systems, and that's where we're headed. So when we think about how racism distorts all of our vision, how we see one another, and how we understand ourselves, we know, you know that this shapes our policing and how certain people, that is, Black people in this nation, have been codified as a threat, have been imagined as a threat, so much so that we see here that some police departments actually use the faces of Black men as target practice, already infecting their imagination of where the trouble lies so that then when they patrol the streets, it's no wonder that our brothers and our uncles and our fathers become the target of this particularly deadly manifestation of distorted vision. But let's not fool ourselves. It doesn't begin and end with police. In fact, we can go down to preschool teachers and think about the way that in our educational system, from the time we enter these institutions, that distorted vision begins to affect our children, our nephews, our grandchildren. Here we have a study from school, the Yale School of Education in which they put eye tracking technology on preschool teachers and found that when the teachers were told to identify the kids in the play group that were exhibiting challenging behavior, their eyes continuously went to the little black boys in the group, even though those children were behaving in the same ways as the other children. So when we talk about racial profiling, we shouldn't just focus on one arena, that is adults who are getting profiled by police, but we need to go down to the preschool teachers and the way that this is not simply implicit bias, but it's justified by the structure of our schooling and our, our continued segregation and the, 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 um, the way that resources are distributed in our, in our institutions. And so these are just examples of distortions that permeate our policing, our educational system, but they don't come out of thin air. That means these were deliberately designed, these particular ways of envisioning and distorting blackness in relation to whiteness. We can go back to a figure like George Cuvier, French naturalist, who was one of many leading scientists who ran you know, the French Natural History Museum, big figure of his time. So not pseudoscience, but the respected science of his time in which he took pains to articulate this distinction between black and white. Looking at the Caucasians, he said, with oval face, straight hair and nose, and identifying that with the civilization and genius and courage and activity. But to know whiteness in this way, you have to then articulate its opposite, which is always blackness. The Negro race, marked of black complexion, woolly hair, the monkey tribe, hordes, barbarism. And so the way that science and religion colluded in order to create these distinctions between black and white is an inheritance that we still live with today.